Double Jump Video Games is a retro video game and toy store located in Vancouver, Washington. You can find all the info, including the address, on our Facebook or Instagram pages. I filmed an entire video on the complete history of Double Jump Video Games, and if you're interested, there will be a link in the description to that video. Welcome to Double Jump Video Games. Our grand opening is tomorrow. It actually might even be today because I'm not sure. It might be past midnight already. We've been here all day working, but I promised you guys a store tour that is a little more in depth than the one I showed in our vlog. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys that now. Um, so starting off at the front here, to the left of the front door, we have the Lethal Enforcers arcade cabinet. All of the games here are set on free play, so anyone who comes in is more than welcome to play and just have fun. So we got Lethal Enforcers here with two guns. This is the custom GameCube kiosk that I built. TV's a little tilted, but I put this thing together. If you're interested in seeing the progress or the process of that, there's a video on my channel. You guys can go back and check it out. And then we have the two pinball machines here, Pink Panther and Bronco. This Pink Panther game is incredibly fun. I have played this a ton. The Bronco one, in my opinion, not so much. <laughs> to the left of that, we have some just display poster type things. And then to the left of that, we have the first shelf. And this is all VHS and cassette tapes. So we are not only a video game store, but we also carry movies, and music and toys as well. So most of the clamshell type ones are up here, continuing there. And we have some like big box type stuff and then Ninja Turtles. And then these are all music related uh, ones here. Well, the start of them. And we have some Lord of the Rings stuff and then these bigger plastic cases. Not really clamshells, they're a bit smaller than that. And then these are the other music related VHS that we have here, mostly rock type stuff, rock and metal. And then down here, these are all of the cassette tapes that we have in stock currently. And most of these are rock and metal. There are some hip hop and old school rap type stuff. But if you guys want, you can pause the video if you want to try and read any of these. But lots of stuff that one uh, eight track is Creedence Clearwater Revival, CCR. And then the last shelf here. We had to double stack them like this because we just had too many. So those are all the cassette tapes. And then the next shelf over is all VHS. Now, the majority of what we try to carry here in store at Double Jump Video Games is either horror or old school cartoon stuff. So the first three and a half shelves here are all horror. And you guys once again can pause if you wanna see anything a little more in depth and we just sell these for three bucks each and obviously some of them are fairly common like you know some of the jaws ones and stuff like that they might only be worth a dollar or two but there's a lot of these that are worth quite a bit more than three dollars so when you kind of average it out you know i think the prices are pretty fair um down here we have some star wars star trek godzilla and then some kung fu movies and this is the, the ending of the horror. Down here we got a couple N64 ones, some wrestling, then we get into like superhero type stuff, cartoons, and then Dragon Ball Z, Power Rangers, and the Power Rangers continue there. Then we have uh, a couple Mortal Kombat ones, but then we have like a lot of the cartoon stuff, the old school cartoon stuff that we try to carry here. Uh, not a lot of like you know, not a lot of Disney movies like Lion King and stuff like that. Uh, more, you know, just cool cartoons from like the 80s and 90s. And then Pokemon stuff down here. Then on the very bottom, this is just doubles of other movies that we have up in like the horror section mainly. So moving over from, well, on top of that actually, we have a few toys here. He-Man and Star Wars stuff. Then... Way up in the back there, we have the old logo. That was the first banner we got made. And then up on top, an empty N64 box. A couple other things up here. 
And then this shelf, which we custom painted gray, it was like a, it was really dirty, but it was like a white color. This is not done. So down where those drawers are, there's going to be a big Nintendo logo that covers that. We're going to put World of Nintendo across the top there and then put black accents, probably like little lines and stuff down the sides to make it look like a World of Nintendo cabinet. So that'll be cool, but we just didn't have time to get that done before we opened. But these are where most of the like standard systems are that we have. And so we have all the little price tags on them. And basically if somebody wants to buy a fat PS2, for example, you know, we won't take this one down. We actually have more in the back and we have bundles of cables and controllers just ready to go. So we don't have to mess with these too often. And we have a bunch of Skylander and Disney Infinity figures. We have a big old Gene Simmons here. The only Famicom games we have. And then these are overflow NES cartridges that are cheaper $3 titles basically for all these. They just couldn't fit in our glass case up front. So I had to put them somewhere and I chose right here. On the bottom shelf, we got a couple box and television games, a little gizmo, some 2600 cartridges, a few Nintendo Powers here. These are all old school ones. And then some random books and other strategy guides and stuff. Most of these are three bucks each as well. So moving over, we have my personal Pokemon Snap Station. This is my number one favorite item in my entire collection. I wanted it for so long and I finally found one. Unfortunately, I do not have room in my game room for it, and I didn't even want to put it here because I'm afraid of people messing with the controller or somehow damaging it, but there's really nowhere else to put it, so it's going to stay here for now. Next to that, we have a couple things on the wall, a couple autographed things here, Corey Taylor from Slipknot and Dan the Dragon the Kung Fu actor. We have a Nintendo banner that came from Taco Bell, actually, above that there. And then we have the first two glass cases which make up part of the front counter. And that is the Pink Panther pinball machine sounding off. It might do that a couple times throughout this video. But up on top here we have some of the, the better N64 games laid out so that customers can, you know, see what they're looking for and they can see the condition of the front label and the prices and all that. That continues on the second top, the the second glass case on the top shelf here with a lot of the Mario and Zelda stuff on this side. And then going down, this is just some of the bulk N64 stuff. Uh, nothing super special, just cheaper filler title type stuff as well as on the bottom shelf here. And we try to keep our prices very fair. Normally we round down from what price chart says. Over here, this is like, these two shelves are all Sega stuff. So we have Genesis and Game Gear. Up here, a couple 32X cartridges and a couple Master System cartridges. And then those are like the better Genesis cartridges up there. And then we have just bulk Genesis stuff down here. The only Sega CD games we have currently. And then the complete in box or cartridge in box Genesis games there. Now flipping around to this little area here. I guess I'll move back to towards the front door. But we have the Wii U kiosk, which unfortunately is not plugged in. We do not, well, we have the system in there, but we don't have the gamepad hooked up. Uh, we can't plug this in without running an extension cord across here or across somewhere, and we really don't, didn't want to do that. So then we have this double-sided pegboard cart thing. It's on wheels, it rolls around, but it's very nice. And we have a bunch of toys. So just some random stuff here. We got, I made these custom toy signs, got those printed out. I'm not gonna go through every single toy, but uh, these three are all He-Man stuff. And then most of the other stuff is kind of just random. This one's all pop figures there. Uh, this one's all video game related toys. These are Ninja Turtles, these are wrestlers. But most of the other stuff is just kind of random, but Lots of cool stuff. We we like to carry this kind of stuff, and uh, it's not it's not something that I know too much about. I'm getting more into it, you know, every day. I learn I learn new stuff every day about it, but I think it's cool. We mostly just have stuff from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, mostly 80s. And then we have some more just random stuff up here. And then both of these little baskets here are filled with one dollar figures. 
and I have probably 50 times this amount, but this is all I could really fit without it overflowing. So I'll just refill it as I need to. And then we have some sealed toys and figures and stuff, things that can hang, a couple thermoses, some cool stuff here. Then moving around this way, we have this really tall uh, rectangular glass case, I guess you could say. There's a boxed Super Nintendo up on top. So we actually just brought this in today. It was a last minute thing, but we really needed it. We have some Donkey Konga shot glasses, and then we have the most expensive item in the entire store, the Neo Geo AES bundle here. Comes with both games, cables, the, the controller here. Very, very cool. And then on the second shelf here, we have the Nintendo Power issue number one. We have three Game & Watches, which I think is pretty cool because aside from these three, I have never found any. A couple of the more expensive uh, Wii U games we have. A couple other handheld systems in here. Game Boy Micro at a black original Game Boy. Moving down, we have a bunch of other handhelds. Game Boy Advances, SPs, a DSi XL. And then we have the higher end PlayStation 1 games. So these here are actually all Final Fantasy, and we have a lot of backstock of this kind of stuff. You know, I have like eight, eight or 10 copies of Final Fantasy VII, but we only need to put out a couple at a time. So like I said, these are just the more expensive titles, usually like $15 or up. I try to separate out from the bulk. So this is where some of that better stuff is. Then on the bottom, we have the Pikachu N64, a couple more SPs, and then around on the other side, we have the Atari Lynx with the Rygar game and another SP. Then on this side, there's a lot of empty space there because there's the Pink Panther again. Um, I'm actually going to be purchasing a large amount of DVDs to fill up this space. We sell DVDs for 99 cents each, which is cheaper than anywhere else in town, so I think they're gonna do pretty well, and I can get them for a lot cheaper than that, so I just haven't had time to do it yet. But on this side, we have some more toys, a bunch of alien figures, which is pretty cool. And then just some random stuff, some amiibos down here, and then these are all World of Nintendo figures, which I'm surprised we have so many, but we do. This top shelf here is more VHS. This is all anime stuff, and I have this is like maybe 1% of the anime VHS that I have. If you guys follow my vlogs, I actually purchased four or five shopping carts filled with them from Goodwill. So I have probably six or 700 anime VHS. Then we have a bunch of DVDs here. This is just kind of random stuff, but a lot of video game related stuff, anime stuff, and then some music ones here at the end. And then a few Blu-rays. Super Smash Brothers soundtrack, and like I said, lots of room to expand. Swinging back around here to the right of the front door, we have the Devastator's Cabinet by Konami. Pretty cool game, once again, on free play. Ninja Turtle on the wall there. And then on this side of the store, we have the 20 foot long, eight foot tall glass case, which houses all of the games all of the disc-based games that are $13 or $12.99 or under. So we have a weird kind of pricing structure which allows us to give better deals, but we don't we don't sell anything for $4, $6, $7, $9. So everything, if you know, we don't round anything up according to price charts, we only round down. So if a game comes up on price charts as being $7.35, we'll round it down to $5. So anything that is in this case should be $13.99 or below. So up on top first though, we have some box systems, some empty boxes as well, some bigger box games and some accessories, also some toys, puzzles, all sorts of stuff like that. So just bigger box items that don't really have a home anywhere else in the store. So they have to go somewhere. That mask, <laughs> that Batman mask from like 1991 is on the Darth Vader case there. So coming back to the front here, starting off we have the Nintendo Wii games and DJ Hero 2. So I'm not gonna open the cases, but 
if you guys really want to see, you know, in detail what's in here, you can pause the video, of course. And the price tags are on the front of the games, so I actually will open it just to show you one really quick. So prices are like that. So we tried to wrap them around so you could see the prices on the spines of the games, but unfortunately they wouldn't stick. So we purposefully got reusable, peelable labels so that they don't leave paper and residue behind. So unfortunately they, they stick really well when they're on a flat surface, but they don't stick very well when you try and wrap it around to the spine. So unfortunately this is how the prices have to be, but it's all good. So. Moving over now, we have the PS3 games. Once again, you guys can pause if you need to. I'm, my arm is a little tired. This is, you know, that top shelf there is pretty high up, so I have to hold my phone way above my head. But you guys can get the idea. We, you know, we don't have like a huge selection of most systems except for Super Nintendo. We have over 500 games, I think, which is insane. Uh, 360 starts on this shelf, and this shelf is also the end of the PS3 games. And then 360 continues. I wanted to take out all of the quantity, like we don't need 10 copies of Black Ops in here, but we just kind of ran out of time, and there's really nowhere to put that stuff in the back as of right now, so it's just going to have to stay out here. Not ideal, but not much we can do about it right now. Just getting the store ready to open was more important than, you know, taking games off the shelf, basically. There's a Donkey Kong uh, board for the board game down there. And then this entire section here is PS2. And we have quite a bit. So, lots of quantity for a lot of this stuff. Gran Turismo, ATV, Off-Road Fury, Grand Theft Auto, God of War, stuff like that. There's, you know, there are games that are fairly common. We just get a ton of copies of it's it's hard to avoid <laughs> but i think we have a pretty good selection of ps2 that's the one system that you kind of have to have a big selection of because there's so many games that were released for it you know like over 1800 north american games came out for the ps2 so if you only have you know 40 or 50 games in your store that's a very very small fraction of the library so I went out of my way to find more PS2 games, and I think that we have a pretty good selection of it now. Obviously, the amount we have is still only a small fraction of the library, but uh, especially when you you know you count the quantity we have, but still very good selection of PS2, I think. Next up, we have the original Xbox and then DS down there. So. All of these games are actually in the cases, and there's a couple reasons why we decided to do that. First is because we don't have room to store the discs in the back. And something else that I thought of after we decided to keep them in, and I'm really glad that we did, is that we sell at a lot of shows and conventions throughout the year, and we want to take a lot of this stuff. And I can't imagine the amount of work that we would have to do if every time we had a show coming up, we had to pull the games off the shelf and then find the discs in the back, put them in the cases, go to the show, set up, sell for one or two days, then have to bring everything back, take all the discs back out, put them in the back, and then put the cases back on the shelf. That would just be way too much work. So I'm glad that we decided to do it this way. But everything's in the case here, and the doors are unlocked, so people are free to browse as they wish, but... I just think this is the best way to do it. Uh, some of the or the DS games here are actually not in the cases. Uh, those are actually stored behind the counter. So that's why you'll see Mario and Pokemon games out here because the cartridges are not in them. Up here we have GameCube games. I purposefully put these closest to the counter because they're small discs and, you know, out of what out of everything that's in the glass case here, I think GameCube would be the easiest to steal. So that's why I put it right by the counter, so hopefully no one tries. I'm sure eventually somebody will and somebody will get away with it, but we got to do what we can to protect ourselves as a business. But I think we have a decent GameCube selection as well. Not too many games, but, you know, a couple Vita games there. Those are also not in here, as well as the 3DS games. These are not in the cases. They are stored behind the counter. 
on our very small selection of PS4 and Xbox One and Dreamcast and Wii U. Then we have our pretty pathetic PS1 selection. I think that it could be a lot better. My personal collection is five times this size. It's just PS1 games are just, they're not super common. They're not easy to find. But we have a few long box ones over there. And then we have PSP games right here. And then movies right here. And then a couple arcade sticks and Skylanders. So flipping around, we have a couple banners here, Simpsons little standees, and then we have the front of the store. So we already showed you guys those two cases over there, but if I turn around this way, we actually have another glass case here, which is full of Super Nintendo games. And these are mostly cheaper titles. Um, I think 50, or 15 and below, I believe, is what's in here. Um, but like I said, we have so many Super Nintendo games, over 500 currently, including the quantity, that we had to figure something out, and so we had to put them, we had to go buy another glass case just for them. And then we have some, uh, some NES games here that are mostly Tengen and then Bible Adventures there. And then we have our little plush rack here, which, uh, we're actually opening tomorrow. Tomorrow's our grand opening, so tomorrow morning we're bringing more to fill up the bottom, but this is what we brought just with us today. These ones, all everything in here is three bucks. So we try to try to keep our prices pretty low and pretty fair. So coming up to the, the three glass cases here, first one here is NES stuff. So once again, everything up here is going to be $15 or above. And then second shelf is the same. Some, you know, 15 bucks and above basically. We don't have anything too rare for the NES right now. I think Stack Up is the most expensive one we have. And then down here is just bulk filler type stuff, $13 and below basically. And as you can see, the back part of the glass case is empty, and that's because you couldn't see the games if they went all the way to the back. That's why I put some in that other case. Moving over, we have Super Nintendo, and all three levels here are $15 and up games because we have so many. So all the filler went to that other case, but these here are the better titles. So you guys should be able to see everything, but you know you can always pause if you need to. And then on the side here, we have some of the most expensive games in the entire store. Metal Warriors, Incantation, Earthbound, Knights of the Round. And then on the second shelf here, we have a few more expensive titles. And then it's gonna be hard to kind of show these, but I'll do it like this. Once again, $15 and up on most of these, or all of them, I should say. Then on the very bottom, we have uh, our one Super Famicom game, Sealed Ocarina and Sword of the Berserk for Dreamcast, and then the rest of the higher priced Super Nintendo games here. And then these are the original Xbox games that are higher priced and 360. So we put these little price tags on here so that you can see them because the price, the regular price tags are on the front, but these are the, the higher priced stuff. And then the last case here on the top, we have original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. A lot of the Pokemon games and more popular stuff I tried to put up here. Then on the next shelf down, we have the remainder of the Game Boy stuff and then also some Game Boy Advance. And we actually have quite a bit more than these. These are just the better titles. That tub right there is completely full of loose handheld games, including PSP stuff. So uh, if anyone wants to look through those, all they have to do is ask. We also have a couple little things on the glass case here to let people know we have more. Then on the very bottom here are the rest of the expensive games from the big glass case. So GameCube, Wii, PS2, PS3. So. We have a lot of backstock of this kind of backstock of this kind of stuff as well, but uh, like I said, we only put out try to put out a couple copies of each game, and then it's gonna be hard to show, but PS3 and Wii stuff in the back there, and then moving along to the to the right, we have a little countertop area, a few things of candy. We wanted to get more, but uh, just ran out of time little fun ways to do tip jars. And then 
behind the counter. Obviously, this is an employee only section. I'm not going to show everything here, but this is a lot of back stock of games and stuff. And then these are just extra controllers and cables. We have the TVs here with systems hooked up to quickly test things, to allow customers to try games out before they buy, whatever they want to do, basically. And we have file cabinets here, here, and here. And those are not final locations for them. They're just kind of there because that's where they are for now. But those have cables and controllers in them as well. And then we have a couple things of pegboard up here on the wall with shelves. And before we look at those, this is actually a Super Nintendo Classic that we are raffling off tomorrow for anyone who makes a purchase on our grand opening day gets entered into that, gets a chance to win that. So on here, we have our little neon Xbox 360 sign, which we accidentally left off. <laughs> but we have Complete Box N64 and Super Nintendo on here. So I'll let you guys see those really quick as well. We have some better stuff, which is cool because I personally only collect complete and box stuff. So everything you see here are actually games that I already have in my collection. So it's cool that we were able to get stuff like the Breath of Fire 2 and the Lufia 2 because I already have them. So that's cool that we have stuff like that for the store because I think usually, you, you know, stores don't have things like that. These are really high up, so it's kind of hard for me to show. I'm holding my phone as high as I can. Then over here, we have some more N64 games and the start of Cup 2, two NES games, and then the Sega Saturn games we have, which is a very small selection. I'm not going to bother showing back here. It's just back stock and just all sorts of stuff that's not tested or cleaned. The bathroom is back there. My office is right there. But over here, these are all the manuals we have that are extras. These are only Nintendo ones, so we don't price out PlayStation manuals and stuff, but if anyone wants to look at those, they are more than welcome. That one is getting crushed there. <laughs> and then these are just extra boxed systems that I haven't been able to put into the inventory yet. And then over here, once again, just more back stock type stuff. This is a Sega Pico that we're going to bring a game from my collection tomorrow so we can test it and then hopefully put it out. A couple more TVs with more systems hooked up. This is the disc resurfacing machine, very high end unit here, which works very, very well. These are all those loose games, like I said earlier. And then we have more stuff here. Some of the more expensive systems and uh, just some other odds and ends. And then turning over here, we have the final little selection of stuff. This Pokemon sign is just here because we don't know where else to put it for right now. But these are all uh, memory cards, controllers, accessories, stuff like that. And then some display items up here. But uh, we have memory cards for pretty much every system. Some cool stuff like the PS1 screen. There's the NES Dogbone controller. We got a bunch of Wave Birds and Fantastic N64 controllers. The Monster PS2 controller. Xbox 360 network adapter. So just all sorts of stuff. And of course, this is not everything. We have, we have so much back stock of stuff like this. Actually, this box right here are all GameCube and N64 controllers that we would like to have up there. There just is no room. <laughs> but here's what an employee sees. There's Abby over there. And uh, we got all sorts of stuff here, bags and price gun and tape and all that kind of stuff. So that is Double Jump Video Games. And like I said, our grand opening is tomorrow, which is August 18th, 2018. I don't know when this video is going out. This actually might go up after we've already opened because I don't think I'm going to have the energy to edit this video right when I get home. But I wanted to give you guys an in-depth look at the store when it's all clean and ready to go. And of course, things are always going to change. We're always going to have new inventory. And, you know, we're probably going to be moving stuff around when we need to to make room and all sorts of stuff like that. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.